I knew that him and Puff was housing white British girls. I, they gonna come out. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, stopping by, welcome. Hit up that subscribe button so you can stop by more often and catch all this mess because it is a mess. Let's jump right in. So Cassie broke her silence. She is speaking out for the first time following the release of a 2016 video that showed her being physically assaulted by Monster Diddy. She released a statement on Instagram expressing her thanks for all of the love and support from my family, friends, strangers, and those I have yet to meet. The outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now, but this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to someone I never thought I would become. With a lot of hard work, I am better today, but I will always be recovering from my past. Thank you to everyone that has taken the time to take this matter seriously. My only ask is that everyone open your heart to believing victims that, I'm sorry, to believing victims the first time. It takes a lot of heart to tell the truth out of a situation that you were powerless in. I offer my hand to those that are still living in fear. Reach out to, the, to your people. Don't, don't cut them off. No one should carry this weight alone. This healing journey is never ending, but this support means everything to me. Thank you. Love always, Cassie. God bless you, Cassie. I will continue to keep you and your family in prayer, but I want to leave you with this. Isaiah forty twenty nine. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And also... Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, so there's a seventh victim. But before we touch on that, I want to talk about the sixth victim. I did a video on her the day before yesterday. Crystal McKinney is her name. There's some new details that I wanted to share with you. She's the one claiming that Diddy invited her to his New York studio and plied her with alcohol and marijuana until she became intoxicated. In her complaint, she filed under New York's Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Act. She alleges that Diddy then forced her to perform oral fellatio on him. In Crystal McKenney's lawsuit, she says that she still has her unwashed clothing from the night she was allegedly sexually assaulted. She says that the clothes have been wrapped in plastic and stored inside her closet for the last two decades. That night, Crystal was dressed in a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon beige V-cut shirt, a fur-lined handbag, and jewel-encrusted jeans, the suit alleges. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiffs saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remained in a plastic wrap, the lawsuit writes. At the time of the alleged attack, Crystal McKinney was up-and-coming model and a fashion designer not identified in the documents introduced her to Diddy at a Men's Fashion Week event. The suit states, The designer allegedly began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Diddy Combs found her attractive. After the event, Miss McKinney claims that Diddy made suggestive displays toward her, offered to help her with her career, and plied her with alcohol. After being invited back to his studio that night, Miss McKinney alleges Diddy was drinking and smoking joints with several other men. One man allegedly told her, You've never had weed like this before, which the model later came to understand was laced with a narcotic 
or intoxicating substance, the lawsuit says. She alleges that after becoming very intoxicated, Diddy led her to the bathroom where she was forced to perform fellatio on him. As she was being assaulted, plaintiff felt panic and physically sick, the lawsuit alleges. She lost consciousness afterwards and awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment, feeling humiliated and traumatized and without recourse. Miss McKinney said that her modeling opportunities began to dwindle for her after the alleged assault, saying she believes Diddy used his influence to blackball her in the industry. In a tailspin of anxiety and depression, Miss McKinney says she attempted suicide in or about 2004. Ms. McKinney says that she is filing the suit now to seek justice for herself and for any of other Combs victims. The complaint also names Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment Music Company, his clothing label, Sean John, and Universal Music Group. Yeah. So, so okay, my question was answered because the other day when I did this video on Crystal McKinney, I had a few questions because I saw her on the True Life, I'm a Model episode on MTV. And um, and I was saying, because the way she came off, she came off like she don't take any crap. That's what I got from watching her. That's why I said, I don't see her waking up from a cab and not going to the hospital and check and do an all-word kit. And I'm right, she, she did way more than that. She saved all her clothing from that night, 20 years ago. So that's good. That's going to really help her case. So that's good. Um, so let's move on to the seventh victim, April Lempros. But before I do, I want to play a clip of Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Gene Deal. And I've heard him say this a lot of times about Diddy and Jay-Z when they would get together. They would always ask each other, how's your skinny little white girl doing? How's your skinny little white girl doing? That sounds very dehumanizing. He said Diddy and Jay-Z was housing white British girls. Let's play, check out the clip, you guys, and I'll be back. When y'all heard Becky with the good hair by Beyonce, I knew that him and Puff was housing white British girls. I, they gonna come out. Maybe they do, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But they were housing white British girls. And when I tell you I wouldn't take them chicks to a frog jumping race. That's how bad they look. They didn't look like the one you be like, yo, damn, I could see. Oh, I could see that. Cause when every time they meet with each other, they'll say, yo, how your skinny little white thing doing? How your skinny white girl doing? How your skinny white girl doing? No, nah, I wouldn't take him to a frog jumping race, uh, Ed Miller. For real, for real. That's how bad they look. And they used to meet up in restaurants that had not opened because, like, a lot of restaurants might open up at three or four o'clock in the afternoon, serve restaurants that stay late night in New York. We used to go in the restaurants when they were closed in a private room. They have a little meal, puffwood with the skinny little white girls. And I'm sure their friends were doing the same with Jay. 
because they would talk about it. Housing white British girls? So wait, were these girls prostitutes? He said this three months ago, and he said the girls may come out. So, but were they hell against their will? Because if they're housing these girls, and he said uh, um, they would be at restaurant, they would go to the restaurant when they closes, and the girls, the, the skinny little white girls will be, I guess, doing things with them while they eat. Jay-Z and Diddy, this is crazy. Jay-Z's day is coming. He's next. He is next. He is just as evil, wicked, abusive as Diddy. And they like young <coughs> boys and girls. So let's move on to the seventh victim, April Lempros. So Diddy's new accuser is suing him over multiple sexual assaults she claims started back in the 90s after they met in New York City. She says she was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology, and she says she he offered to mentor her in the fashion industry. After he gave her some gifts and flowers, April claims they met up in 1995 at a Soho bar where he plied her with alcohol and then brought her back to his room at the Millennium Hotel. In the lawsuit, April says she started to feel ill and as if the walls were closing in on her, as Diddy allegedly started to force himself on her, but unable to defend herself when he began outwitting her. April says she woke up the next morning nude, sore, and confused. April says months later, she heard from Diddy as he began pursuing her again. She claims he lured her with access to music industry events. In the lawsuit, her attorney describes her as a hopeful yet naive college student and took Mr. Combs at his word and believed that the first R word was a possible mulligan and decided to give him a second chance. She claims they were on their way to dinner, walking to his car in a parking garage when he forced her to perform fellatio on him. April says a garage attendant saw them, but Diddy was unfazed. After that alleged incident, April says she rejected his continued invitations and he grew angry, calling her incessantly and threatening to blacklist her in the industry. She claims he developed a mobster persona. April claims there was an incident in 1996 when he ordered her. He ordered her to his apartment, and when she got there, she was introduced to Ken Porter. She claims he forced ecstasy down her throat and then demanded she have XEX with Kim while he, um, you know, master, yeah. Eventually, she alleged he outward her again. April says she finally broke things off in 1998, but then had a run-in with Kim at a restaurant where April was working. According to the lawsuit, Kim told the restaurant owner April had tried to poison her, and if he did not fire her, Diddy would shut down his business. April says she was fired. April says she and Diddy ran into each other once more in Rockefeller Center around the end of 2000 or early 2001 when she points out he was dating Jennifer Lopez. After exchanging pleasantries, she claims Diddy ended up coming back to her apartment where he suddenly violently grabbed her and forced himself onto her, but she was able to fight him off and he left. Sometime last year, April claims someone told her then-boyfriend he had seen a video of her having SEX with Diddy. In the lawsuit, she says she's been told Diddy recorded the sexual encounter without her knowledge and has shown the video to multiple people. She is suing Diddy for sexual assault, battery, and intentional infliction of emotional distress, but she also lists bad boy records, Arista, 
and Sony Music Entertainment as defendants, claiming they enabled him to commit the crimes. Okay, this is bad. This is bad. And this is the seventh one, but there's more. There will be so many more, and I hope they all come out. They come out and tell their story because Diddy has been abusing people since the 80s. Who knows? Probably since he was a junior high. Who knows? Probably younger than that. You just never know. But we do know about when, you know, when he got with Misa, his first baby mother, you know, we knew about that. So that was like what in the late 80s it started. So, yeah. So we don't know before that. I'm sure that they don't just come, they don't just become abusive at, you know, 21, 19, 18, you know. There's a pattern, so I'm sure he probably was abusing people since younger. I don't know. But, yeah, you guys, but that's all. What do you think, you guys? Leave a comment. And, um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, please like, please share. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.